These are the Philippines Special Forces on the hunt for ISIS militants. Just taking cover here because the snipers are around the city, so even getting to the positions they need to be in is a challenge. More accustomed to jungle fighting than urban warfare, battling in these tight alleyways is proving harder than expected. Buildings were previously occupied by the terrorists. Are they still here? Those were shooting at us. Where are their snipers? But, yeah, the big buildings over there. How close? 200 to 250 meters. These forces are turning this bombed out school into a sniper outpost and preparing to attack. We have one pilot position there uh -huh. taking fire. The enemy snipers, of course, they're there. Okay. We have another one inside here. Can you see the enemy snipers from here? From our scopes, yes. Okay. We can see their muzzle flashes right now. Okay. Under the table, under the table. Ready. Fire. Nakita mo butas Ready. Fire. They have to leave this area. We just shot fired, so we expect a counter counter attack to us. Okay. With the enemy now firing back, the unit is taking cover in this classroom until the escape route is clear. Wow, so crazy to see that this was an active school just a couple of weeks ago and now it's bombed to smithereens. Is this the toughest war you've been in? Why? They're not running out of ammo. They can leave behind IEDs while they're pursuing them. Uh -huh. Two IEDs laid here by the terrorists because this used to be a terrorist stronghold. Uh -huh. We pushed them back the river. But if you can see the area where we passed through, uh -huh. the maze of small alleys, uh -huh. the streets are the killing zones. This is Marawi. For weeks, the Philippines military, assisted by US Special Forces, has been pounding the city with airstrikes and battling house to house in an effort to root out this man. Isnilon Hapalon, the leader of homegrown terror group Abu Sayyaf. They pledged allegiance to ISIS in 2014. Philippine authorities say Hapilon, along with another ISIS-linked militant group called Maute, were planning to establish Southeast Asia's first Islamic State Caliphate here in Marawi, a predominantly Muslim city in a country that's more than 90% Christian. With an extensive network of hundreds of fighters, both local and foreign, these militants have mastered the terrain and stashed away a seemingly endless supply of weapons. this continuing barrage of airstrikes going off all day long. The only functioning building in this part of town is the tactical command post of one Marine Battalion, the main forward operating base for the armed forces. We're being fired at? Yes. From where? From that the position. Other side. From the other position? Side. Yes. Okay. So, we should keep a low profile. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Have they managed to fire in here into the base before? This is still a hot zone. Major Rowan Remus is one of the commanding officers who's been stationed here since the fighting began. Firing, firing! Can you just show us where the enemy is? 
Okay, this is this is Mapandi Bridge before this was well defended. So um, they in place car bombs, roadblocks, and they employed sniper fires. So the city is essentially divided by this river going yes. through. Okay. So the enemy is contained within this area on the other side of the bridge. Other side of the bridge. Okay. Now the target of our maneuvering elements is to neutralize those uh, vantage positions through our mortar fire. Oh, sounds close. the city with airstrikes and they're just about to send this mortar into enemy territory. Not Just hours after we left this base, these Marines were ambushed during an operation. 13 were killed and at least 40 wounded in what was the bloodiest day for the armed forces since the battle began. But it's not just militants inside the city, there are also hundreds of civilians. We managed to get the number of one man who's trapped in the heart of the siege. Do you have a plan to escape? We don't have concrete plan, man, because we don't know which is the basis of uh, IC, so we have to stay put and wait for the rescue. Are you safe right now? I don't know why, but uh, the, I think the authorities uh, know, know that we are here. No, I have to hang up. I'm running out of battery, and uh, my battery is for the rescue team. Please, 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 let's help them. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Who? You hung up. For the people trapped inside Marawi, the army is not moving fast enough, and the situation is becoming more desperate by the day. So, is everything going to plan from your yes, side? Yes, uh, we are doing very well. Okay. Colonel Jua um, Herrera is the spokesperson for Joint Task Force Marawi. Barrett. He's a 50 caliber. Uh -huh. Despite the military's many setbacks, he's keen to show us that the armed forces have retrieved around 120 high-powered weapons from the enemy. I mean, obviously the insurgents were pretty well equipped. How well equipped are your troops? Well, uh, our armed forces are well educated, highly trained. We are very capable to address uh, terrorism. Because obviously there's also a lot of criticisms towards the armed forces suggesting that you're not well equipped and that you're not doing a great job, quite frankly, at pushing back these militants. Well, uh, I think that, that that's their opinion, okay? How long do you think it's going to be before...? Well, we don't want to give timeline because we, we need to put premium on the lives of the people that were trapped in that conflict right. area. Right. Obviously, time is running out for them. I mean, they've been stuck yes, in Yes, but uh, we're, we're doing our best. Yeah. Okay. Now, as the military ramps up pressure on the remaining terrorist strongholds, a humanitarian crisis looms, and concerns that Marawi is only the beginning of an increasingly violent ISIS presence are rapidly spreading throughout the region.